Hi folks, Nick Cortez here with Creation Army TV. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about templates and setting up your workspace. A lot of people ask me, um, Nick, how do you get yourself set up to start doing some of these illustrations that you're going to do? How, what, what kind of template you know, do you set yourself up, yourself up with? And um, I always uh, tell them to start with something that's nice and blank that gives you basically only the essentials of what you need. So let's jump right into Illustrator. Again, I'm using CC, but you at home can do this with any version of Illustrator. I'm, I won't be showing you anything that's CC only. Let's talk about uh, templates. Usually, um, at, you'll get your welcome screen when you open up Illustrator, and um, you know there's there's no document open, and sometimes people want to start a new drawing, so they'll hit File. Um, and then they'll hit new, you know, uh, new RGB. You'll see this panel pop up. Um, I almost never deal with this panel because I work, uh, excuse me, from a template almost every time. So you can give your document a name, uh, you know, drawing. Um, you can pull from a template of, uh, rather, you can pull from a pull down of templates. You know, do your intent your illustration to be print. Uh, web, are you intending it to be on iOS and Android? Are you working for video and film? Do you need a basic RGB? Uh, and they go from there. Let's choose basic RGB. Number of artboards, um, one, we can change this later. Uh, the size of the artboard uh, is available from a pull down. You, of course, you can do 8.5 by 11, which is a letter size. Uh, legal, I believe, is 8.5 by 14. I might have that wrong. 8.5, uh, something like that. Um, and, you know, do you want your units to be in points or picas or inches, millimeters, uh, pixels, uh, etc. Um, if you go to your advanced options, then you'll be dealing with um, the exact color mode of the document. Of course, if you're doing an RGB document or something for web, it's always going to be RGB. Um, but if you know that you're going to be doing something for print, then you know this is your opportunity to, ch to change your color mode over to CMYK. Um, your raster effects, if you intend to use drop shadows and, uh, and other, you know, Gaussian blur, other effects like that, um, you can use this opportunity to um, pull down and tell Illustrator how uh, faithful do you want the rendering of those effects to be. I like to stick to 72 because my, my drawings tend to get quite complex and uh, it can really slow down the computer if they're, if they're higher medium. In preview mode, uh, will we be looking at the nice smooth illustration, which is default? Will we be looking at pixel or, or overprint? I'll, I'll leave it on default. And um, you can check this to have new pixels, new objects aligned to the pixel grid. This is important um, if you are someone who is uh, designing a website in Illustrator. In other words, you're placing buttons and text, and you want your your new artwork that you create, create a square, for example, and you don't want it to be living on the artwork. Uh, sorry, on the artboard somewhere at. Uh, 37.5 pixels because there's no such thing in the world of web. It's either at 37 or it's at 36 or it's at 38, you know, period. These are all changeable later on, so you know, if you feel like you made a mistake, you can always, you know, open up your your project's properties. Let's hit OK and I'll show you how that's done. Uh, here we are greeted with our first artboard. I'll zoom out. And our first artboard is um, I forget the size, so you know, how do I how do I say? Oh, uh, did I did I size this wrong? Am I is something wrong here? Do I have to change it? You can um, edit your artboard with this artboard tool here. It's Shift O on the artboard. I think this was only available from CS. I want to say CS four and up or CS five, um, where you can actually edit an artboard uh, freely in your illustration. So I'll hit Shift O, and you'll see the artboard um, come up with these little target lines. You can click and drag and change the size of your artboard if you want to. Or if you look here at the top of the screen, these two numbers, your width and your height, represent the dimensions of the artboard. I can change this to whatever I want, um, maybe 1280 by uh, 720. Pretty good standard 16 by 9. And as soon as you touch any one of the other tools here, you will switch away from artboard editing mode. And now you're ready to draw objects. So it, this is also great. I'll hit Shift O, uh, Shift -O again because um, editing your artboard with this top panel also lets you rename your artboard 
It also lets you bring up um, center crosshair. You can barely see it here. It's, it's a green center mark. It's not available, or sorry, not visible when you print or, um, or f do your final output for your artwork. It's just there to guide your eye. You can turn on um, uh, crosshairs for the uh, top center, bottom center, etc. And you can turn on title safe too. So if you know you're, you're des designing something for HDTV, you can turn on your title safe areas and you know that you're not supposed to cross those boundaries. So I'll just uncheck everything here. And then of course you can place your shift O tool, which is your artboard tool, anywhere on the artboard and you can move it around. If this is checked, then any artwork that is on the artboard will move with it. Um, if not, then the artboard will just move independently. So I will just uh, click that. Now, here's another, um, let's, you know, let's, let's get into like setting up our templates. You'll notice if you look at my swatches palette, it, or if you look at my graphic styles palette or my symbols palette, they are pre-populated with these with these items. Here's you know the brushes palette. It's loaded with a bunch of stuff that I know that I'm never going to use. Um, I've been using Illustrator for ten years and I, I've never used these. I, I always make my own brushes. I always make my own swatches. Um, I always make my own symbols. And it, I will get into um, how to make those and what the differences are in other videos um, in the very near future. But Again, you're working with this basic RGB document that was given to you by choosing File New. And you're dealing with a bunch of things that you might not need. It's a, it gets you off to a good start. If you're looking for an orange, there's a quick orange. Uh, if, you're, you know, if you're looking for a, a, a certain button, I guess you could drag this out and, and there we go. And I'm working with a button. I, you know, I didn't do anything. I didn't make that. I just dragged it onto the artboard. But these are all things that make your file size larger. You'll hit file save and your file size will be, let's say, 300K, when really it could be 150. It could be nice and small and take up less space on your hard drive. So it, it is in your favor to get rid of the things that you don't need when setting up um, an art template, a uh, custom art template for your own purposes. So that's one thing that I like to do. I like to get rid of all of this stuff. So I'll just actually take these two brushes. Can't get rid of basic. So I'll take these two brushes by clicking on it, holding shift and all the way to the bottom. Clicking on the bottom one selects all three of them and then I'll just trash them. And then we have like some basic um, calligraphic brushes up here, which I know that I'm not gonna use, but it, if I need to, I can make my own. So again, I like to work with as blank a template, a template as possible. And I'll take these three calligraphic brushes and drag them to the trash. So I don't need them. Now my brushes palette is clean and empty. Um, what else do I like to work with? I like to work, I like to have black and white in my swatches palette, but really nothing else is, is necessary. So I'll click the first red swatch here. I'll click on the very last one, which happens to be a pattern. Uh, maybe I'll include these, um, these groups, these folders that contain other swatches, and I'll trash those too. I, I really don't need them. Um, a warning will pop up. Do I want to keep them? You know, do I want to delete them? Yes, I do, because I will be creating my own colors. It's, it's really not necessary. Uh, graphic styles. I will do a whole video on graphic styles and the appearance palette because they're so important. But these are just some looks like in Photoshop, like Drop Shadow and, and uh, Bevel and Boss and uh, some other graphic styles that you, you may want to put onto an object. Uh, if, you, if you click one of them, it will it will quickly give you that uh, sort of property, uh, like this pattern, or, or this look right here where we've got a white fill and a black stroke. You can only delete these three, which I will do. Yes, I wanna delete them. And I'll zoom out so we can see our artboard. You, can only, you cannot delete the first one. This is your default graphic style. You always need to keep that in there. You can't get rid of it. Um, again, I'll be making a whole video on how to change this and how to add your own and make and use your own graphic styles. Very important. Um, the appearance palette is also extremely important and I'll do an entire video on that. Let's go to the symbols palette. You can delete everything here to your heart's content. We don't need those either because we're not, I don't even know what these are. I guess these are quickie uh, buttons if you were designing a, a website. We don't need those. Another thing that I like to do with the basic RGB is I like to go to the layers palette um, and I like to name the layer that I'm working on um, artwork. There we go. You can just double click on a layer 
and in CC you can just rename it within uh, the palette itself, but I think uh, lower version below CC, when you click it, I think a dialog pops up here. And this is where you can rename the layer if you want to. You can also change its um, color tag to whatever you want, and you'll get some other options, um, which we won't worry about for now. You can make a layer a template, you can show it, you can dim images, etc., etc. And these these are all things that'll help you trace artwork. Um, and th they'll help you later on, but we won't get into it now. So I'll just, I'll just hit OK. And another thing that I like to do, I know that I'm going to have many, many objects on my, on my layers palette here, but I like to make this little symbol here that represents each one of the pieces, I like to make it larger. So I'll click this little flyout button on the layers palette, and I'll come down to the bottom, panel options. Panel options lets me change you want to show layers only? No. I want to see all the artwork on the layers. I use the layers palette extensively to move things above or below other things. I want to show um, I, uh, my row size. I want things to be small, medium, or large. Right now they're medium. You can see that radio button. You can, you can do large if you want to. I'll hit OK and we'll, and we'll take a look. And so now my thumbnail for this layer is now large size, or you can do whatever you want. You can enter a 30 here if you want to, and they'll be they'll actually shrunk down, but I'll leave it at, I'll leave it at large. Sorry, I'm gonna hit panel options here. One more time, and hit large. There we go, and I'll rename the layer artwork. I guess I, I hit undo one, one too many times and went back to layer one. There's nothing worse as a, as a graphic designer than receiving a file somebody from somebody and it just says layer one, or it says layer seven. Um, that is kind of a pet peeve of mine. Um, it is important when you're making uh, artwork, either in Illustrator or in Photoshop, to give a unique name to every one of your layers, because you never know when your artwork is gonna be shipped off to someone else, uh, to another office, and the, that other person who you may or may not know is going to open up your artwork and look at something called layer one, and they're not going to know, you know, that doesn't really say anything. I know that the word artwork is not much more of a help, but later on, if I have seven layers and I'm drawing a gorilla character, and one of the layers is fur, and one of the layers is eyes, one of the layers is, sh you know, shadow underneath, then it's going to be a lot more helpful. Um, the other thing that I like to do, the other, this, this is kind of strange, but you'll notice in Illustrator, when you start typing something, you use, the, use T on the keyboard to bring up the text tool. If I start typing something, I'll zoom in on that, okay, that it is in this very unexciting font called Myriad Pro. This goes back many versions of Illustrator. It's, it's, it seems to always be Myriad Pro. Um, Myriad Pro is built into almost any computer. It's a very common web font. And when you're working in this basic RGB template, everything you type by default becomes, comes up Myriad Pro, uh, regular. And of course, I can just make it bold if I want to. This is a very boring font. It's a very boring typeface that I personally don't like to use. I don't like to see it. Um, so one thing that you can do to help set up your template so that you never have to see Myriad Pro is go over to this panel, which is called Character Styles. If you don't see it on your screen, it's, it's under Window, Type, and then character styles. All of, all uh, six or seven of these panels are devoted to typography. So I'll bring up character styles, and you'll see that it just says it's just blank except it says normal character style. That's what this is right here. It's just it's 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 your default. See when I touch the word something down here, it just says normal character style, and it's lit up. This is built in with the basic RGB template that comes with Illustrator, and this is something that you can basically reprogram um, to whatever you want. So if you prefer um, copper plate instead, here's what you can do. Before you, you don't have to type anything. You can just come to your character styles uh, palette and double click on normal character style. I, I double clicked in this area just to the right of the word and the panel comes up. If you double click right on it, you'll just kind of rename it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Whatever, it doesn't work. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter, we'll just get over it. You can actually come here to the General tab, and uh, you might be able to rename it. No, I guess not. Oh, I'm thinking, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of another program altogether. 
But in this palette, you can change the default or normal character style of new text objects to anything you want. This is a summary on, on the, the first tab. The second one, basic character formats, this is where you change it. So you can just pull this down to whatever you want. You won't really get a preview in this window, you actually get it here on the artboard. So I will pull this up, see it change to the last thing that I had highlighted. So I'll pull this up, and I think we said we were going to go with copper plate. Very common font, very common, very classic. Looks like I don't even have it. Oh no, I do. Copper plate. There's my copper plate. It's in light. I want it in, let's say, regular. And I want my size to be, um, let's say, 14. You can change your lighting and your tracking and anything else. You can change it to all, all caps. You know, anything that you want. I encourage you to open this up and um, decide for yourself, you know, how you want it to look. You can even change your character color if you want to. Um, and then open type features is more advanced for print jobs. So I'll hit OK. And now, if I delete that, now everything that I type in a, a new text object will be copper plate, or it will be whatever type style you want here. You can also create alternates. So if you uh, like this, but you want to go with bold, you can of course change this to bold. And then you can take this object, drag it right down into um, the, I'm sorry, you used to be able to do this, but I guess you can't. You, if you have it selected, it's bold, and you want that to be a new character style, not normal, but one that lives here, you want, might want to come back to. You can always just hit new, and then it just says character style one. If you double click that, then the options come up. Now, here's where you can rename it. So, bold copy plate. Sorry, all caps. You can name it whatever you want. You can name it heading, or you can name it subheading, or you can name it body copy. So, for instance, if you were making a, um, if you were designing a, a flyer for somebody, and there were headings, subheadings, and then body copy, you would need three character styles. You would, and let's say it was all Helvetica. Your headings would be Helvetica, bold, at 72 point, and that would be your headline style. Um, and so on and so on. I will make a complete video on how to get more acquainted with textiles and how to change them. So I'll just say okay, and we're gonna delete these. We don't need them. All I wanted to do is demonstrate the idea, uh, the the uh, ability to change your normal character style to something other than myriad. So we've got an artwork layer. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna add another layer, which I usually like to call pick or picture. And this is a layer that maybe I'll turn it, you know, lime green. This is a layer that I like to put my source imagery on in case I need to trace something or, or, or have a reference image of some kind. And I usually put that above artwork. So I usually start myself off with two layers that are pretty good in size uh, as far as the, the, the preview. And again, we go to panel options to find that. I like to get rid of the unnecessary brushes. I know that I'm gonna make my own brushes or not use these at all. I like to get rid of all the you know swatches that came with it, so that I just have my my bare essentials basically. And notice that everything is basically blank, and that's the idea. We want a nice light file that we can store and open at a moment's notice, and quickly start drawing something without having to worry about getting rid of things that we don't need. So at this point, I want to save this whole thing, which is a big blank drawing if you think about it. But I want to save the fact that I have changed all of these panels to something that I need. And what you do to save that, the idea is to save yourself a template. So you don't save, you don't hit Command Shift S to save as. We're not drawing, we're not saving a drawing. We're saving a template. So I'll, instead of hitting save as again, I'm gonna hit save as template. It's too down from save as or save a copy. I'll hit save as template and you'll notice that this is now Creation Army Team. Oh, here we go, templates. This is now an AIT. If you pull this down, you'll see this is, it says Illustrator Template. Illustrator Template is different from just an Illustrator file. An Illustrator Template will uh, live here in my templates folder or wherever you put it on your hard drive. 
and it will always um, it will always be saved. It will be difficult for me to save over it, in other words. So I got my nice blank template. I'll save it as drawing um, RGB, and I'll hit save. All right, and now that file is tiny. It's maybe 50 kilobytes, and it's saved. And of course, I'll close this. And now let's open from templates. Let's open drawing RGB. Notice how it's only 47 KB. This is teeny tiny, and I love that. Um, let's hit open. Here we go. It even saves our zoom level. It saves our, you know, artboard position. In other words, I don't have to hand tool around and find my artboard. It saved layer order. It saved all the swatches and everything. And the most beautiful part is it saved my character style so that if I start typing something, I don't have to look at that awful font called Myriad. So, that's basically how I set up my template. Now, if I make any change whatsoever, let's just make a square and then hit save. If I hit save, you'd think that I would be saving right over this, but that's not the case. This is grayed out, and this is gonna be saved as untitled.ai. This is an AI file, not an AIT. So templates are great because they are difficult to be saved over, and it, it uh, is at any point if you hit save, uh, you'll be asked you know, how you wanna save your document. So I always, I make myself an RGB, and I've also made myself a CMYK. And uh, in future videos, I'll be talking about graphic styles and um, symbols and appearance palette. And there are a few brushes that I like to save um, into my general RGB um, working art uh, template that are at my disposal. Um, for quick use and these are things that I commonly use over and over and over so join me for some future videos and we'll be talking about all those things thank you for joining me on Creation Army TV this is Nick Sanoa thank you